Hey, long time no talk. I know it's been a while. I haven't posted since the preseason, but I'm trying to get this going here again. I want to try to get two posts or two videos at least per week. Do a Monday and a Friday. Monday will be three segments. It'll be a recap of the game, uh, a little foreshadowing to who the next opponent is, and a division outlook. Friday will just be a uh, game preview. We'll talk about uh, injuries that are there. Um, anything that popped up between, you know, the time I post on Monday night and then Friday. So, for the first installment of uh, Wolfpack SK recap, we got Detroit. So, Lions won 24-17 yesterday, uh, I think for three reasons. Three reasons I got. Defense, turnover ratio, finally... You know we've been we've been down in turnover turnover ratio the last couple games, but positive two in the turnover ratio. Uh, smart quarterback play, big deal. You know Stafford's got all the talent to put up all the great numbers. We've seen that before. We've also seen it lead to to nothing. So in years past he could go 350 yards, four touchdowns, you know, and a pick, maybe win, maybe have to come back at the end. To win but it's looking like this year maybe it's just because he's still working on the offense but it's looking more like he is playing a game manager with the ability to do more if need be which hey it's working lines are three and one so uh, Stafford looked amazing yesterday uh, you could tell him maybe I think it was the end of the third maybe the beginning of the fourth he started uh, limping around uh, we were kind of worried about it here but He's, he's done that a few times, you know, just limps around, finishes the game. You know, if you look back, w the play that sealed the game was a, a pseudo read option that uh, he had a, he had an option if uh, if the safety was crashing down on Bush on the run, then he was going to pull it and run it for a first down, which is exactly what he did. That was a wrinkle that Joe Lombardi pulled out during the game, which, holy shit, we have a quarterback or a coach that can uh, – adjust mid game you know who knew there's coaches out there that can do that so you know smart quarterback play at zero interceptions and I don't even think any were close like you know you get a lot that quarterback throws right to the guy and he drops it or you know turn back for a penalty that should have been an interception I don't think there was any of those not that I could think of off the top of my head so I think his rating was like a uh Let's see here. His rating, Stafford's rating was uh, one 116.4, which is, if you know, 158.3 is a perfect rating. Uh, his QBR, ESPN's little cor uh, total quarterback rating, it's basically it takes an effect. How does he play on third down? How does he, you know, in scoring position, how does he do? How many sacks? So it takes more than just regular. If you don't know, a little sidetrack. A normal quarterback rating only takes an effect. Uh, Attempts and completions, yards, touchdown, and picks. That's it. Doesn't take into effect anything else. Fumbling, none of that. So the ESPN's quarterback rating takes all that into effect. So it's looking like it's sticking for ESPN, but we'll see if it sticks anywhere else. I kind of like it. Uh, total or perfect score is 100, and uh, Stafford had an 80.4, which last I looked, he was eighth ranked in the league. With a, uh, I think, a average of 77. And uh, to put in perspective, Gino, who we played yesterday, uh, he had a 12.3 quarterback rating, ESPN quarterback rating, uh, and a normal quarterback rating of 68.9. So that just shows, I mean, Stafford 24, 34, 293, two touchdowns, just efficient. I mean, Calvin had two had two catches for like 25 yards, you know, and everyone else stepped up. Tate played amazing. You know, it's nice to actually, when Steph, or when Calvin goes down, to have someone else to throw to. You know, in years past, it's been nobody. It's been Chris Durham, or as much as I like Nate Burleson, by the time we got him, he was washed up. So it's nice to actually have a number two option to go to. You know, and Fourier got hurt this week, so he was out which meant more time for Ebron, had that amazing back shoulder uh, catch for the touchdown from Stafford. So that was probably, the out of the three keys, that was number one. Stafford, his efficiency, 
you know, his decision making, he ran for a touchdown. You know, he did the read option at the end to salt the game away. So that's number one uh, in order here. Number two has got to be turnover ratio. I know we were minus two last week, still won convincingly, but that was an anomaly. Normally when you're negative in the turnover ratio, it doesn't bode well for you. So we were able to be plus because Geno had an interception and he had a fumble. From James Aheadabo, finally nice to see him playing. He looked amazing yesterday. Uh, Pro Football Focus rated him as the best line or best uh, defensive player for the Lions yesterday. So that's nice to get him back. Uh, which I saw a little. They were uh, put a little wrinkle in. Terrell Austin did since he was back, and they still had Caduce that's been playing for the you know the last few games. A lot of the plays, if you go back and look, uh, they had a Caduce back at safety, a Hedebo up on the line as like a, a fourth linebacker, and then. Uh, Quinn played the nickel corner because we've been, been so decimated with uh, nickel corners. It's ridiculous. But uh, that leads right into the, the point number three. Again, the defense, amazing. I mean, not only did we not see this coming, but if you were to say Lions would have the number one total defense in yards and then lose Tulloch, Bentley, Nevin Lawson, that's three guys right away. And then we didn't have a head of bow the first game or the second, the first three games. This is the first time we've had him, who's our starting strong safety. Um, you know, and then Van Noy, who got hurt in the preseason. So it's amazing to have coaches that can coach based on the players instead of forcing the players to adapt to their system. You know, that's what great coaching is. It's, it's, not putting a square peg in a round hole. It's, you know, you coach based on your players, not the other way around. It's not, okay, this is our system, run it, like Rich Rod did. This is in for Michigan. I know I'm wearing Michigan, I'm talking about Lions, but whatever. So, Tara Lawson has taken the guys that he's got, the scrubs that they've got, and, and made them, you know, look amazing. You know, even those, the backup guys, we have Gorner and... Uh, the other corner we got? We got another... Oh, uh... Cisse. The guy who couldn't even start in college. I mean, it's just... It's amazing what uh, Terrell Lawson can do. What he's done so far. And uh, after a couple weeks, you could say, Oh, maybe it's a fluke. You know, after four, maybe it could still be a fluke. But I highly doubt it. We're actually winning games the way you need to win games in January. We've won games in the past where we just put up a shitload of yards, shitload of points... You know, and came back from the end. Look at Philly. They did that the first three weeks, and they couldn't do it. You can't win that way. You have to be able to control the game. And we were down 3 nothing at the beginning of the game, tied it up in the first drive, and then we were winning the rest of the game. We were winning the entire game last week, and we were winning the entire game in uh, the first week against the Giants. So these aren't three fluke wins, guys. These are, you know... We controlled the whole game. It was only seven, but if you watch a game, you know that it was way, you know, we won by more than a touchdown, theoretically. So, that's that's yesterday's game. Nothing but positives. Uh, I guess if you want to nitpick, I mean, we got, uh, Joy Bell got hurt. So, hopefully he'll be back. Theo Riddick got hurt. Hopefully he'll be back. Calvin was a little gimpy. But, I mean, if you want to nitpick yesterday then you, your whole being is just to be negative. Because as a coach, you, you should be negative. You say, hey, this is what we could have done better. But as a fan, as a, someone that's watching as an analyst, you got to realize what we did yesterday. And knowing, okay, knowing who we played, I get it. But knowing that with the injuries that we had and what happened on defense and as efficient as we played on offense – you know, we even st still missed another field goal, so it should have been 27. So, if you want to be negative, that, that's on you. I'm not going to be negative at all about yesterday's game. There was nothing I could see negative. Maybe the first drive, but even the first drive, everyone scripts their first 15 plays. So, that's all they could do. After they after Martin Morningweg went through his little uh, spreadsheet there, it was over. So... Uh, just the, I got the defensive stats right here. It's just it's mind blowing. Uh, Lions are number one in total defense yards per game. They've only given up 267 yards per game. 
I'm pretty sure Aaron Rodgers had more passing yards than that all in yesterday against the the uh, Bears. We've given up 267 a game. That's like a that's 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 like an okay game just in the passing game. I mean Stafford threw 293 by himself yesterday. Not adding on the you know 88 yards rushing that we had. So that's crazy. 267 in this day and age with all the the penalty or the uh, yeah penalties and all that stuff is amazing. Uh, passing yards were sixth. Actually, hold on. That's that's total passing yards. Second, we're second in average passing yards at 186 per game. Everyone says, oh, we shouldn't have drafted. Sorry, including me. We should have drafted a corner instead of Ebron. You know, obviously there's no way they could have seen this. But so far, we haven't really needed it. Uh, rush yards per game were sixth at 80, yard, 80 rush yards a game. Uh, points per game were fourth at 15.5. You know, I don't like to do this, but it's, say you were to take away that second win, the second game against Carolina, only giving up 14 week one, seven week two, or week three, and then 14 week four. So defense has been on par. So that's that's yesterday's game. Uh, next up is the Bills at 2-2. Two and two. Uh, They just lost to Houston yesterday. Started out 2-0, and oh, beating Chicago on the road in overtime. And then they uh, they won week two, uh, I think it was Miami. They beat Miami at home. And then they've lost the last two. Uh, the big storyline here, there's two now. There was one going into the game, which was Jim Schwartz reunion back to Detroit. He's their defensive coordinator. So we'll, be, we'll see Jim Schwartz again at Ford Field. I'm sure they're going to blow that up as a huge thing. Uh, as a Lions fan, it was time to move on, but I got nothing but love for Jim Schwartz. Uh, you can hate him all you want. He took this team that was 0-16 and made him relevant again. We haven't been relevant in 15 years, and he made it went from 0-16 and, and made him relevant. So, you know, you haters can hate Jim Schwartz all you want. You know, like I said, it was time for him to go. He did as much as he could, but I got nothing but respect and, and love. I'll look back on Schwartz as the guy that brought us out of the abyss. Um, the other big storyline, uh, the Bills benched E.J. Manuel today. They will be playing the neckbeard himself, Kyle Orton. Uh, you'll remember Kyle Orton as the quarterback for the Bears, who pretty much, I mean, Rex Grossman that year brought him. You know, had a good record, and then Kyle Orton pretty much played the playoffs, and then uh, Grossman came back for the, the Super Bowl. So he, he's had some success in the league, but he hasn't started in a while since he was in uh, Denver uh, back in, was that, 09, 10, something like that. So, I mean, this game, on a, on Monday, we still got six, games, six days left till the game day, but looking at it right now, we should blow him out. You know, obviously that almost never happens, but we'll talk about it more on Friday. Uh, a little preview. And uh, the last little bit here, division outlook. The uh, Green Bay Packers played the Chicago Bears yesterday, completely embarrassed them. I think it was close at the half, but end up uh, Green Bay won 38-17. to That's after only giving up seven to them last week for us. So... You know, everyone wants to say, oh, Green Bay's figured it out. Well, how about how about the Lions' defense is making players play worse? Look at how good the Giants look and how lo how bad they looked against us. Carolina, again, is an anomaly. Packers look like shit, and now they blow people out. The Jets put up, what they put up? Uh, I think they was like 20-some against uh, the Packers. They only got 14, 17 at home. So maybe we're just making guys look worse. Who knows? You know, it could be a could be a coincidence. Who knows? But Green Bay embarrasses Chicago. They're both at two and two. Uh, that puts Chicago at 0 and one in the division. Green Bay at one and one. And then uh, Minnesota hosted Atlanta. They they uh, surprised a lot of people, especially with with uh, Matt Castle going down and Teddy Bridgewater getting his first start. I, I thought they would win. I picked them to win in one of my pools, but I didn't think they were going to win the way they won. They won 41 to 28. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater looked amazing. Uh, he got hurt though. That's the thing is, yeah, he, uh, he got his ankle rolled up, uh, rolled up on. So we'll see, see if he's fine. We play them next week. 
uh, in Minnesota. So we'll see if he's ready to go by then. Or, you know, he could be ready to go this week. But we'll see next week. But Minnesota wins. So they go up. Uh, the record's 2-2 two and two as well. And still 0-0 zero, zero in the division. They haven't played division division game yet. And we are 1-0 and no in the division. So after the first quarter of the season, Lions are number one in the NFC North. At three and one, one and zero in the division. Um, got a, another AFC game this week, so we'll see. But uh, that's it. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll keep it going. Like I said, I want to do another video on Friday and uh, try to get more consistent about it. I kind of want to do a little thing on Sue, the whole Sue thing that came out yesterday. Uh, possibly, I'll do something on that. But. That's it, guys. Uh, please, please share. Please subscribe. Please help us out. You know, obviously, we're never going to go far with this, but it'd be cool to get as much feedback as possible. You know, let us know in the comments if you want to bring anything up, if you want us to talk about anything. Uh, let us know. So, have a good one, guys. Go Lions.